Hello students, welcome back. So in my previous session I discussed, in fact we started about some special matrices. So proceeding, proceeding on the similar topic, today we will be discussing about the various other remaining other matrices. So in the previous session if you remember we discussed about basically symmetric and skew symmetric matrices. This we have done. Then today we will be switching to Hermitian and skew Hermitian. This is extremely important kind of matrix then is singular and non singular. Now this depends on the properties of determinants. The concept of singular matrices is dependent on determinants. So once I discuss this I will be doing this. So today we won't be discussing this kind of matrix. Next we will be switching to nilpotent then it comes unit tree, idempotent matrix, involute tree and orthogonal. Now what do we mean by a Hermitian matrix? Hermitian matrix, have you ever heard? Wait, we will be discussing it. This is, I won't say it's complicated, but it's not that simple also. So, what do we mean by a Hermitian matrix? Definition says a square matrix A equal to Aij is said to be a Hermitian matrix if Aij is equal to A bar Ji. A bar is A conjugate that is a theta is equal to a. Now what is this theta? This theta is in fact called the transpose conjugate. Transpose you must be knowing we discussed in my previous uh, session. So what is transpose conjugate? This is also in fact called conjugate. Transjugate. Now if you remember a plus ib in fact you must be knowing a plus ib is conjugate if I say what is it? A minus IB. So conjugate of a complex number is when we change the sign of the imaginary part. So what is conjugate is transpose conjugate. You first change, find out either, either uh, sorry in order to find out a theta what you need to do is you either calculate a transpose then you find out conjugate. This is the sign of conjugate or you ca calculate a conjugate and then you find out transpose. One more thing these two are always equal that is whether you find out transpose and then conjugate or you calculate conjugate and then transpose both will always come out to be equal. So a theta is a transpose conjugate. See this is an example you will be able to understand this with the help of example. I take this as a I find out A transpose, transpose A B minus IC, then I have B plus IC and D. Now you are required to find the conjugate of this matrix. This is A B plus IC, you just need to change the sign of imaginary parts. B minus IC and D. So if you see this, this is A theta this is a theta and if you compare a theta with a we can see that this comes out to be equal to a hence such a matrix is called as a Hermitian matrix. Similarly this is also a Hermitian matrix. Now the next property says every diagonal element of a Hermitian matrix must be real. You can see it here the diagonal elements of this are real here also the diagonal elements are real. So the diagonal elements of a Hermitian matrix are always real. Next we have is Q Hermitian matrix. Skew Hermitian like we had symmetric and skew symmetric. Similarly we have Hermitian and skew Hermitian. The definition says a matrix a square matrix square matrix you must be knowing that is number of rows is equal to number of columns. So a square matrix A equal to Aij is said to be skew Hermitian if Aij is minus of negative of A conjugate Ji for all i and j that is you can say A theta is equal to minus A. This is an example. Now you just calculate A theta that is a transpose and then you find out the conjugate that will come out to be negative of A. You can check it easily. 
So, this is an example of skew Hermitian matrix. The next property says the diagonal elements of skew Hermitian matrix must be purely imaginary or zeros. See here in this example there are all zeros. So, what does this say that if you have a matrix and the diagonal elements are suppose purely imaginary either they are purely imaginary or they are zeros then you can check further for the matrix to be a skew Hermitian matrix. But in case the diagonal elements are neither purely imaginary nor zeros then you can directly say without any kind of calculation that the matrix is not matrix in fact cannot be a skew Hermitian matrix. Just note here the difference between what I said. The diagonal elements are extremely important. They help you in deciding the nature of a matrix. Okay, next we have is nilpotent matrix. Square matrix A is called nilpotent if there exists a positive integer m such that A raised to m is 0. That is if the mth power of matrix comes out to be 0 matrix then you can say that the matrix is nilpotent. Further if m is the least positive integer such so that a raised to m is 0 then m is called the index of the nilpotent matrix A. Suppose I have some matrix A square matrix such that on calculating we get suppose A square comes out to be a 0 matrix then you can say such that A is non-zero. Then you can say that index of matrix A is 2, right? This is simple. Okay, now we have an illustration based on that concept. Show that the matrix, this is sorry 3 cross 3, so its square matrix is nilpotent matrix of index 3. So what is this question asking us? What this question requires is you just need to prove a raised to 3 is equal to 0. Then we can get that a cube that is a becomes a nilpotent matrix of index 3. So we had discussed multiplication of matrices you can easily find a square then you can find a square into a you do then you will get a cube and this comes out to be a 0 matrix. Hence since According to the definition a cube is coming out to be 0 so we have a is a nilpotent matrix of index 3. Okay, So next is unitary matrices. Square matrix again is said to be a unitary matrix if a a theta is equal to a theta a equal to i that is if you have a matrix a you multiply it with its conjugate transpose conjugate and it comes out to be an identity matrix this is identity matrix or you multiply the transpose conjugate of the matrix with the matrix itself and you get it as an identity matrix then the matrix A is said to be a unitary matrix. Okay, Next is involutary matrix a square matrix A is said to be involutary if A square is I that is identity matrix. Now what does this mean? Suppose I have any matrix A and if I calculate A square I get it as identity. Then you can simply say that A is involutary. Next we have is idempotent matrix. So the definition says again a square matrix A is called idempotent provided A square equal to A. If the square of a matrix equals the matrix itself then it is said to be an idempotent matrix. Suppose we have an example this is a 3 cross 3 matrix so it is a square matrix is idempotent as a square if you calculate ok let me remind you of the calculation also. How do we calculate a square multiplication of matrices this quantity into this quantity plus this quantity into this quantity plus this quantity into this quantity will give you first element. Similarly if you calculate a square you will get it as this which is the same as a. So a square equal to a implies a is i dempotent matrix. Next we have is orthogonal. See these matrices are very simple the definitions are quite simple 
but the main thing is that you are likely to get confused between all of them among all of them so it would be better if you revise them again and again and it would be even better if you solve questions based on them so that you are not required to remember them you'll be able to remember them easily by calculating various solving various questions okay so next is orthogonal matrix a square matrix a of order n is said to be orthogonal if a a transpose is equal to a transpose a is equal to identity matrix so if a matrix multiplied by its transpose gives you an identity matrix or the transpose of a matrix multiplied by the matrix itself gives you an identity matrix then it is called as an orthogonal matrix now we have certain important properties of orthogonal matrix they are if a is an orthogonal matrix then a transpose is also orthogonal so if i have a orthogonal matrix i can directly say that its transpose is also going to be orthogonal orthogonal means satisfying this property right so if a and b are orthogonal if you have two orthogonal matrices a and b then their product are also orthogonal be it ab or ba both will come out to be orthogonal so if you are required to prove that ab is orthogonal what you need to prove is ab into ab transpose is equal to i or you can prove ab transpose into ab should come out to be equal to i so this was quite simple right so okay that was it for my this session i hope you would have understood the definitions were quite simple but as i told you you will have to practice a good number of questions on these types of matrices and do stay tuned for my future sessions as well as i'll be switching to the topics of joint of a matrix inverse of a matrix then we'll be switching to determinants thank you